Hi, I'm Dr. Schultz. Let's talk about prostate cancer. In this video, we're going to talk about the four things that you need to know when you're considering doing PSA screening for prostate cancer. The four things we'll be covering is what PSA actually is, all the controversies surrounding PSA, a protocol on how to do screening, and then, of course, what to do if the PSA is high. PSA stands for Prostate Specific Antigen. PSA is a protein manufactured in a man's prostate. Several things can cause PSA levels to rise besides cancer, including gland enlargement with aging and nonspecific inflammation called prostatitis. You would think everyone would want to find prostate cancers at the earliest possible stage, and everyone agrees that PSA can help accomplish this. The reason it's controversial is actually PSA is more accurate than it even needs to be in one sense, because doctors are finding little tiny cancers that don't need to be treated and will never cause harm. But because there's a large industry out there poised to treat men with high PSA levels, a lot of men are getting unnecessary radical treatment. And that radical treatment can cause problems with sexual function, urinary function, and other issues that can be permanent. We're going to be covering ways to try and extract the value from PSA without incurring the dangers of being told you have a cancer and getting an unnecessary treatment. There's really no disputing that PSA itself has value in detecting prostate cancer at an earlier stage. So there's nothing wrong with the PSA test itself. It's how the doctors and patients respond to the information it provides. So what are the nuts and bolts of PSA testing? Well, first, how high is the PSA? If you have a blood test and it's above two and a half to four range, that is thought to be a concern. Uh, it's not a precise issue, though, because higher levels are allowed as men get a little older, and lower levels are expected when men are younger. When should you start testing? What age? And this is a somewhat controversial as well. Some people say age 40, others say age 45 or 50. Um, one compromise is to consider age 40 in people that have a family history or are of African American descent. Uh, and then reserve a higher age of 45 or 50 for people without those risk factors. Be aware that recent sexual activity can cause PSA to elevate and has nothing to do with cancer. And so men need to abstain from sexual activity for a day or two prior to testing. Lastly, since PSA can jump around on its own for reasons we don't fully understand, if you have a high PSA, wait a week or two and consider repeating it to see if it falls back into the normal range without any intervention at all. And finally, uh, some doctors are fans of giving antibiotics to men with high PSA levels. I personally don't ascribe to that belief because the antibiotics that are typically used can occasionally cause serious problems. So I, I'm much more a fan of waiting and seeing if the PSA will come back on its own, waiting two to four weeks and repeating the PSA. What's the next step if after repeat testing, uh, the PSA is staying above the normal range? That's two and a half to four, depending on a man's age. And the answer to that is, for most doctors, is to do something called a random biopsy, where needles are stuck in the prostate 12 times trying to cover the whole gland. About a million men undergo random biopsies in the United States every year, and this has been the standard approach for 30 years. That is changing. Recent studies show that modern MRIs are more accurate than random biopsies. And you can see the advantages, because when people are sticking needles in the prostate, there are, is, of course, a risk of infection, bleeding. That's quite uncomfortable. Unfortunately, some men, it can cause erectile dysfunction. So doing an MRI at a qualified center is a much more accurate and a far safer way 
to evaluate a high PSA. Is there anything else you can do short of an MRI? And the answer is there. yes, there is a blood test called OPCO4K, which can give an idea of whether prostate cancer is in the prostate with somewhat greater accuracy than what a PSA can offer you. So if men undergo testing with this blood test, OPCO4K, maybe 10 to 20% of the men will have such a favorable score that they don't even need an MRI. They don't need a biopsy. They can just continue monitoring. Four out of five men that have an OPCO test, however, will have some degree of abnormality and risk and should therefore proceed and get an MRI. So you can see that doing PSA screening to detect prostate cancer at an early stage is somewhat complex. But if you use a systematic approach and you're careful in how you use this information, it can benefit you and you can avoid the risks and the dangers that are associated with overtreatment of prostate cancer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and of course, visit our website, which is filled with useful information about prostate cancer.